Rebecca Player here for the Business League. Uh, sitting next to me is uh, Australia's, uh, or Queensland's, first ever chief entrepreneur. We've just been calling him chief this morning. Um, I'm sure his wife disagrees, but that's cool. She does disagree. So we'll work with that. But also, um, incredibly uh, profitable and skilled uh, businessman and founder of Blue Sky Investing. So, Mark, very quickly, let's get the, um, the political side of things. Tell me what Chief Entrepreneur is and why it's important right now for yep. Queensland. Yep. So, um, so basically what our job is to connect up the private sector and the public sector. So our job is to help startups, scale-ups and SMEs grow. So connecting them with investment, with mentors, um, opportunities, even sales with government if we can get there on they're working on procurement right now. Um, and the reason that's important is because that's where all the jobs growth comes from. So all your jobs growth and all your wealth creation, by and large, comes from small and medium-sized enterprises and startups. So this is the only way we're going to grow the economy. Uh, Telstra and banks, they're not going to grow. This is where you have to do it. <laughs> Great complaint is it's Telstra and banks. Um, but the Gold Coast is a small startup or the small business capital of Australia. Yeah, it is. And then, but, but the problem with the Gold Coast business sector is that not many of them have gone on to bigger businesses. And you still need the hero businesses to come through and, and to get to 500,000 people. Like, you need some scale. Like, I actually worked out and I realised in our business that scale matters. Like, it talks about getting scale. Scale really helps. Like, stuff happens without you having to do it, which is quite nice. So, uh, so we need some big businesses that have deep expertise that can almost become, you know, the glue that holds them together. Yeah. And what we tend to find is maybe it's a lifestyle or maybe they move or uh, whatever the reason, there's just not enough momentum to build many big businesses here. And we need to change that because that will help buffer us in the other things that we do that are more cyclical. Mm. And uh, I'm going to talk to Mark a little bit further about scaling and, and leadership and that perspective over. You can check that out on the Leader Red Business site. But um, for now, you've shared with um, our business breakfast at Bond University University Club this morning, uh, some very humorous and charming stories, some very honest um, stories, but mainly what you've seen in growing blue sky investing over the last 10 years. Yeah. So um, you've seen a lot of businesses in that time? Yes, yeah, yeah have. there's some simple things that people do that are wrong. Yeah, yeah so you said that we've seen around five to 6,000 businesses in the last 10 years. Yeah, like <laughs> lots and lots, and it's scaling. So last year was 1,293, so I'm guessing it might be more, but it's, um, but you see a lot of stuff come through, and, uh, and what I realised is that there's all these myths that people have, and so one of the myths, the first myth that I made a mistake with was that you've got to have someone who's a financial person with you, who's are scared of accounts, mm -hmm. and um, you don't need someone with you to do that, actually. You should have them with you if they're going to add value. The value you need to be is that there's a really, you need filters to make good decisions, and one of the filters that I was given was for every shareholder you introduce, you double your risk. So if you introduce one person, you just double your risk, they need to bring more than double the benefit, and it's a judgment call. Uh, but then you bring another person in, and you just double the risk again, so it scales. And that's because human beings uh, don't always do what they say they're going to do. And particularly not when things get tough. And I don't know any small businesses where things don't get tough. So you know, I'm a structure freak. You've got to get the structure of your business right, but you've also got to get the structure of yourself right. So you need to get prepared for this. Um, and I always say to people, just start, which is fine, but you've also got to have a fair bit of self-awareness and understanding of who you are, what your risks are, what your limitations are, particularly your weaknesses. And so how do you make yourself as good as you can be so that you're not the person that's the problem with the business? Because you don't want to be that person. And nobody ever thinks it's them. They always think it's the other guy or the other girl. And so how do you solve for those problems? And once you do that, and then you need alignment. So alignment's the thing that people don't, it's an uncomfortable word, because what does it really mean? Well, it's kind of one of those woo 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 very very words that people yeah. really use, that you've got to be aligned with your business's kind of vision or something. And your partners and yeah. all those things. So simple rules are you've got to have all of your net worth in the business. So everything you've got. So if you've got a partner coming in, uh, they need to be taking the same risks that you are taking. And so, but don't take the money off and put it into the business. And uh, and if they don't have everything in there, so if you preserve optionality around something, if you've got conviction that something's going to work, but you're preserving optionality, then you are setting yourself up for failure because when it gets really hard, uh, you will drop back into your nice, comfy job at the bank uh, rather than fighting it. Mostly, what happens that we see is that businesses fight for a long time and then eventually somebody gives up or they give up and they miss this moment and they're so close to winning and they don't even 
know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't they do. quite finish yeah. the job, but they go through the finish line. If they went through the finish line, their lives would change. And instead, they fail, you know, and then they go back to doing something else and live a really boring life. And Florence Machine has a, I don't know if you know her, uh, a British artist, and she says, always down before the dawn. It, it always is, so it really isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and you know, you've got to have these, you've got to set yourself up for these. Everyone talks about luck, but that's not that at all. It's random moments that you're setting yourself, random collisions that you're trying to set yourself up for. And they are better if they're with good people. And so the random collisions turn into something worthwhile with good people. And so surrounding yourself with good people with logical networking, you can't say you're doing it in a genuine way where you're building genuine friendships. And you know, there's a great expression in the startup community, which I think works no matter who you are, is give first. And what happens is, is that other people that you give to will always give back in some way if they're good. And if they're not much good, they'll just take from your time. If you recognise that, don't get upset. There's lots of people like that. On. You'll find the good people doing that. And I, I certainly wasn't asking you to give an ad for the business league right now, but you certainly have. <laughs> in, um, in you know, 90 members here on the Gold Coast uh, at the moment, and it's all about finding your kind of awesome man and being involved in that. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you a bit more about um, putting it all in but at Lee Better in the moment. But um, what was your favourite part about this morning? What, what did you, oh, what did you learn about yourself? What did you, what did you learn about yourself? Oh, no, I mean, I, 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 mean, I sort of know this because I've been doing it a lot now. It's like, I really enjoy these sorts of uh, events because you've got people that are motivated, engaged, they're doers, uh, they're, in the, they're in the fight. And so, you know, when you're standing up there and you're talking, you can see that everybody is with you uh, because they're desperate to succeed and they're here because they're motivated and they want to learn and they've got a brain and they're having a crack. Uh, you, know, you just can't do enough to help those people along the way. You know, it's engaging. Like it's not a group that are there to win professional development points and tick a box. And I remember we did a regional tour recently and we sat down at some schools there and Steve Bannister said to one of the kids, um, you know, why are you here this morning? He said, to get out of maths. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no one here to, there was nobody here just to get out of maths. Yeah, no, definitely not. Because um, it was a cold morning here this morning, so these people were definitely not getting out of maths. <sighs> I think we could go to Hunt 6 to your day because you're an absolute pleasure to speak with. Um, but structure, alignment, yep. conviction were the three things I could have. Yeah, that uh, maximises your chance of success. Yeah, perfect. Um, if you loved what Mark Salvi has had to say this morning, um, how can people find out more information about what you do? I hey, just look up the Chief Entrepreneur's Office or Advanced Queensland and you can find us and now jobs to help. Beautiful. Um, and if you want to know more about how you might see people like uh, Mark come and speak, then you can connect with us at Business League. Uh, find us on Instagram, Facebook, and over at businessleague.com.au. Uh, I'm Rebecca Plant. Here's Chief Chief Salby, Mark Salby, Chief Entrepreneur and uh, founder of Blue Sky Investing. See you again soon. Thank you. All right, one. I um. Oh, that's